all right guys welcome to another video in this video my intention is to install a brand new xp 100 the purpose is so that you can understand how to install an xp 600 printer head normally when you buy an xp 600 printer head it comes in a box like this usually where you buy it from us it comes in a box like this now this is a regular six nozzle xp 600 printer head some customers come and they say well they are afraid of installing their printer head you shouldn't have to call an engineer to explain to install your xp 600 if you watch this video so i want you to stay tuned uh, while you're wasting i want you to hit the subscribe button hit the like button turn on the notification bell and let's get to it so usually when it comes in a box like this you take the rubber band out like that you drop it and then you open it up like that and then come up with this usually your x600 it should look like this a dx5 would have these two slots on one side but an xp600 would have these two sides so that's one way to know if your printer head is xp600 normally it will have six channels one two three four five six the dx5 will have eight so there's an extra two down this way uh, an i3 200 doesn't even have this shape neither does the dx5 have this shape a tx800 doesn't have this shape so xp600 is the only one that has this shape and that's basically how epson does them by the way these print heads actually are not made in china they're actually made in japan so if you find them in china they are not brand new they are they were either bought from japan and then sold to you somehow either as brand new as refurbished so uh i already have something here that's currently working so i'm gonna have to take these ones out and then i'll install this brand new one so you can see how it works right so um usually this is the board right so the print head will be connected to this side if your machine uses two heads you'd have seen that this place would have been populated it would not be barren like this right so which means suppose i wanted to get you know creative i could actually reconfigure this board to use two uh heads all i just needed to do was to plug something in here but we're not doing that so uh to use an x600 printer head it usually has two sides this place and then this place uh, this chip would normally go on this place, especially this way. If you look at these pins, so you can see how this high sets. So now, uh, if you take your cable, right? Usually your cables will come this way. And it'll have a tiny notch at the sides, right? The notches at the side. You see the ones with the notch, right? That's not the side that goes in this chip right the ones without the notch which is the second side right that's the side that goes now it doesn't matter which cable you use for left and right if you buy your machine brand new you might see some cables that have left and right written on them but if you have had to change your printer head you'd have seen these cables now this cable is agnostic it doesn't it doesn't matter where you put it just make sure you put one on the left and one on the right so the way i like to install them is to install the left first but you can choose to install the right so this is basically how you do it the most important thing when you're installing a printer head however is that the pins on this place all these pins must match all of these pins right so watch me as i put it in the right so now this has to go where the pins are going right so you can't put it this way by the way, I said left the other time I was wrong. I meant right. So if I put it this way, for instance, you see that the pin goes to the back. To the back, not to the front. So this is not good, right? So I have to turn these guys around in such a way that the pin will be connecting because the pins that must connect. So then you stick this guy in. Make sure when you're sticking it, uh, the pin side goes on and each pin is overlapping on top of each other. There are a couple of ways to know if the pins are overlapping each other. So if you can see the way I'm doing that, the reflections of the pin is appearing on the teeth of the printer cable, right? If you see that, then that means it's already aligned. You can see those silver lines showing on, on the cable as I move it. 
great so that already shows you the alignment of the pins with the cable so just slot it in like that and that, that's just perfect so if you look at the reflection of the pins now it's showing on top of each of the cable that's one way to know if you're correct right so and then you do the same thing remember the part with the notch goes to the printer head the side without the notch is the one that goes in here so you do the same thing that way so you're going pin for pin right pin for pin so and then you slot it in now if you don't know what i mean by pin for pin i did this in the previous video where i installed an xp sonar about two years ago this is what we mean by pin for pin suppose this was the cable and this was the uh the uh the pins so the pin of the cable must match the pin of the head like that right can you see pin for pin that's the way it works pin for pin not like this not like this pin for pin the next part is to then install the printer head but before we do that right we would want to take this chip now and then install it on the head like so right can you see it's also pin for pin here don't install in such a way that the pins are left out or the pins are missing the first spot has to be pin for pin right like that and then you stick it in the reason we're doing this first is so that we can then know how to bend the cables like this on top of the printer head so while we're at that I am also now going to cover the top right here. So let's just do that quickly. So we'll cover it like this. So the next part is to then install the XP600 print head, right? So this was a stain, right? So this next thing is to install the XP600 print head. Now, don't forget the way we arranged it the left is usually the cable at the back so that's the cable at the back while the right is the cable at the front uh if you look there on top of the board you should be able to see those writings so you can see the front the front the left is at the back while the front is the right so again how do we know left and right well this side is the right while this side is the left so now that we know the left and right we know that the back one is the left so we go in here and then the same rule follows here it is pin for pin so we put this guy against this guy and then we stick it in right then next to that we go this guy and this guy again we're going pin for pin like i said so so now if you look at it pin for pin and then on the left as well pin for pin so the next thing we just need to do is to set this guy on the floor like that. If you have this rubber, you can use it to insulate the head. Otherwise, it's not always necessary. But if you have it, why not just use it? So the way this works is uh, look at these places, right? We just stick it at the back of this like that. Like I said, if you don't have it, it's not like super compulsory that you have to use it. But if you have it, why not use it? So we'll then come and then sit it inside that space like that. All this just does is some kind of suction to make sure that your inks are not leaking to where it's not supposed to go. But to be honest with you, I'm not sure i really see the need for it but if you have it like i said it's not better to drive a car than track so and then you just screw things down like that so let me just quickly screw the printer head down and i'll be back
Now that I've installed the head, now I'm setting the inks on top of the heads. Um, so the way we normally order inks on top of the head is to do um, black first, black first, then followed by cyan, uh, followed by another cyan, and followed by magenta, and usually we keep yellow as the last. But trust me, you could do it's this any way you want the most important thing is that you have all your inks on top of this face and then your machine understands that as well so let's quickly do this and i'll be back so now once you've done all of this you want to make sure that all your colors are full and complete and all set up on the head in my current arrangement i have kcc mmy you can do yours anyhow you want it once you're done with all of that, you do first a manual pump. After you've done a manual pump for like a second or two for the inks to draw, run into the printer head, then you do a clean nozzle. Once you're done with a clean nozzle, you can then move on to do nozzle tests to test the printer head for the first time. So your print head should print something like this, right? So let me do it one more time. I don't know if you can see this, right? So we now have yellows, magenta, magenta, cyan, cyan, black. So that already shows you that your printer head is working. Once you have all these six colors, it's perfect and you're good to go. So I hope this has helped you. It has. I want you to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you in another video. Bye. Take care.